All right, so oh. the plane's coming around. As soon as he, as soon as he circles around, and he's got a straight line on the uh, on the run on the uh, on the DZ here, I'm gonna. It's red, Kev. Uh, I'll I'll pop the smoke. I'll drop it down here, get out of the way, and then what that does is it lets the uh, jump master know right where right where he needs to be, letting the uh, let the uh, troopers come out the door. With the free fall parachute is here, and another plane waiting to taxi on the runway there. They they waved him off that way. That way you don't have uh, you know round canopy. We don't have as much control like these guys do, and uh, you know you want to make sure everything is as safe as possible. It's all about safety. Tell me what happens when. When you jump out of a plane with a round parachute, what, what's what, just kind of walk me through the steps of what happens when? Okay, well you're in the uh, you're in the you're in the plane, and uh, jump master will, uh, will give you the motion to stand up, and then hook up. That's where you take your static line. You hook to the line. There we go. When it's six minutes out, jump master will jump master will stand up and uh, um, he'll say six minutes, and, and and everybody in unison will shout out six minutes. That way, everybody knows what's happening. Jump master he'll say stand up. Everybody will, will stand up, and you're in your gear. You'll you'll unhook your uh, your static line. Jump master will then say hook up. You'll hook into the line, and then you get you get the proper grip on your static line. And the reason for that is so when you go out the plane, you can hand it to the safety and then go out the door. So then the jump master will say, check equipment. And everybody in unison will yell, check equipment. And what you do is you check your helmet, your all of your gear. Make sure every, you know, one last little check because things can move around and jostle while you're in the plane because it's very loud and it's very noisy. And, uh, and a lot of things are going on. <clears throat> and, then, and then the jump master will say, uh, sound off for equipment check, sound off for equipment check, and then from the back of the plane up to the front, so the, the last man in the stick will, will slap the, the, the thigh of the person in front of him and, and say, okay, okay, and it'll go all the way to the front, and then, and then the very first man in the stick will, will, will go to the jump master and say, all okay, jump master. That lets the jump master know that everybody's equipment is, is good and ready to go. And you're standing in line. So then as you're one minute out, the jump master will say, one minute, and everybody, one minute. And, and you're, you're standing, you're waiting, the plane is jostling around, everything is very noisy. And then within, and then when you're 30 seconds out, the jump master will say, 30 seconds. This is a sign for 30 seconds. And then everybody in line will turn, 30 seconds. And you're, and you're standing, you're waiting. Um, and then, Jump master will go into the door. Look, he's going to be watching the drop zone. He's looking for where he's where he's going to allow his drop jumpers to start going. And then the first man, he'll be like, stand in the door. And, and the first man will will come up, will get into the door in the ready position. He'll hand his he'll hand a static line to the safety that's there. And then at that point, you're standing in the door, and you're just, and the jump master has had his head right over your shoulder. And as soon as he says, he'll slap you on the back and say, go, and you launch yourself out the door, and then everybody in unison, boom, 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 all go out the door. And then as soon as you come out the plane, when you come out the plane, you have your, your hands, knees, and you hold on to your reserve, and you got your, you got your chin tucked into your chest. The reason for that is because as your chute is pulling out, you're going to get a kind of a whiplash effect. So... You want to make sure your your chin is into your chest that way because if your head's back you're gonna your head is gonna snap when that chute opens up so as soon as your chute opens up the first thing you're gonna look up you're gonna make sure you got good a good canopy you're gonna look around you to see if that there's any other jumpers around you you'll reach up you'll grab your toggles for for steering left or for steering right 
Um, again, you'll look, you're gonna look for any jump, any other jumpers that are around you because you wanna stay a minimum of 50, at least 50 feet away from any other jumpers. And then the next thing that you're gonna to wanna to be doing is you're gonna look on the drop zone and you're gonna look at the, uh, the wind indicators to see which way the wind is going. And you wanna see, you know where your drop zone is and your ha and your hazards on the on the drop zone. So a lot of stuff is going on in a very short period of time because you're going to from the point that you get out of the plane to the point you're on the ground is less than a minute. So there's a lot a lot of things going on, um, and you want to make sure you, you, you get yourself adjusted to where pretty much where you want to be landing, and then you want to then you want to make sure that you're getting faced into the wind because that will ensure that you have the softest possible landing. Um, and then as you're coming down, um, and, and you do have a few seconds to where you can, once you've done all that, you can look around and just, uh, you can just, uh, you can smell the, uh, smell the roses and kind of just enjoy the view. Uh, but also keeping in mind that, you know, your, your rate of descent is going to bring you to the ground. And then as you're coming in and when you're getting close, depending on how the winds are, you're holding on to your toggles. So if you have high winds, you want to have your hands up high. If you've got low winds, you can bring your you can bring your hands down low with your holding your toggles, and you're going to have your feet and knees together. And as you, just as as the ground starting to come to you, the the big trick a lot of, a lot of paratroopers you know have to have to train themselves is to look forward, not look at the ground. Don't anticipate it. Just just look forward, and as long as you are in your proper position, and basically then soon as soon as you hit the ground. Or parachute landing fall you hit the ground get up as fast as you can and you run your canopy down so that so that you don't get pulled with your canopy sometimes if the winds are really strong the canopy can pull you that's why you have a quick release on either side you re if that's the case and you're getting drug on the ground you pull up you hit your quick release and that will pop your that'll pop your canopy uh, um, off so that it will deflate the chute and then you can get up and pack up your chute and go back to your rally point where uh, where you'll turn your shoot in and get ready for your next jump. That was awesome. What's, what's your name? My name's Ken. Ken, what's your last name? Peck, P-E-C-K. I'm a retired uh, warrant officer from the Army. Awesome. Where are you from? Uh, I live in Fernandina Beach, Florida. Oh, awesome. You live in Florida. Well, I, I grew up here in Florida. I grew up in St. Augustine, Florida, the oldest city in the United States. And um, uh, one, of the, uh, one, one of the areas of Florida that I'm most familiar with and which is probably the has the most to do with D-Day is is a uh, little town up in the Panhandle called Carabel Beach, and Carabel Beach is where the Third ID practiced all of their uh, beach landings prior to D two years prior to D-Day. Uh, Carabel Beach is is just a tiny little. I mean, if you blink, you'll drive through Carabel Beach area, but. Um, they have a little museum there, but the history in that particular part of Florida, in my opinion, has the most to do with the Normandy landings because, like I said, the 3rd Infantry Division, two years, two years prior to, uh, to the 3rd ID um, um, landing on the beaches of Normandy there, uh, did, all of, did all of their practice landings there at Carabelle because Carabelle closely mimics how Normandy is how the Normandy beachheads are um, and it's it's very interesting it's and and it's an, it's one of those nice little road trips in Florida that if you get the chance by all means it's 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 a, it's about an hour it's about an hour southeast uh, of uh, Tallahassee but just just a just a beautiful beautiful little uh, beautiful little town beautiful beach and uh, in my opinion in regards to the Normandy landings uh, that's where the that that's where that's where uh, that's where they initially trained for Normandy. Uh, we are a team of uh, either former or active uh, um, paratroopers, and regardless of your branch, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or even Coast Guard, uh, and you know if you're a former paratrooper, you. Uh, you're more than welcome uh, to join, um, and and also if you've never even had the opportunity to to go to jump school, we have our own school that we that we uh, provide at events such as this. Um, it's a it's a three day school where where we will teach you all of the ins and outs of jumping with a round canopy parachute, 
and at the end of the uh, at the end of the training, it will culminate with uh, three jumps uh, that we'll have you that we will have you do, and you get trained up. Um, but the majority of us uh, are, are all former or, or former uh, either former retired or or active, uh, you know, army or whatever branch you are, uh, paratroopers, and um, we we do it. We do it for the camaraderie, you know. Uh, a lot of us get out of the service, and it's like, okay, uh, uh, and and it's just nice where we can all come together, and uh, and it's just the the brotherhood of knees in the breeze. Uh, that's a that's a term. it's a fraternity like no other. But we, uh, <clears throat> but with the mission. What's nice is uh, we'll go to air shows and, we're, and we'll be dressed in our 42s. I'm not wearing my 42 top right now. It's a little warm out, uh, so I took it off. Uh, uh, I will be jumping a little bit later. But, uh, but we'll go with our, it's called the 42s, um, and we'll go to air shows and uh, we'll do round canopy jumps from, from C-47s just like we're jumping from today uh, so, that, so that younger generations who have never had the opportunity uh, or have only seen stuff in TV or movies can see it in real life and, and we do it as close as we possibly can to how they did back in 42 43 44 during World War two and, uh, and and we honor the memory of, of those uh, of our fathers that came came before us uh, um, that jumped into harm's way to ensure that you know we have the freedoms to be here today to, to do this today so it's a it's a it's it's a very unique very unique uh, brotherhood. We're all very, we're all very close. And 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 what's amazing is, is I'll come. I've been coming to these events now for three, almost four years. And every event I come to, there will always be somebody new. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, it'd be the first time that I met them. But as soon as we start talking about our history, it's it's an instant bond. It's an instant friendship. It's it's a brotherhood that that has no uh, has no boundaries important for people to is awesome with the plane behind you right now why it's important for people to kind of know and be aware of the history of World War II those who forget history are doomed to repeat it I, I don't know how better to, to explain it other than those who forget their history are doomed to repeat it so this is a great way to you know spa, spurn interest in younger generations to, to where they might not be learning this in school anymore, where they see this at an air show or they come to an event like this, and like you know what, let me let me go on Google, let me Google World War II Normandy or let me Google Army paratroopers from World War II, and let me learn about what it is that these men did and how they put themselves in harm's way to ensure that that future generations will have the freedoms that we enjoy today.